The kind of clothes you wear generally describe your ethnicity, religion, culture and much more. But what if I tell you that the clothes which you are believing that it represents Indian culture are actually symbol of cultural imposition by our invaders? Hi and welcome to TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Apoorva and in this video I will tell you about the impact of Mughals on what Indians wear. So let's begin. Mughals ruled parts of India for a very long period of time, 300 years to be precise. At the end of the day, Mughals were outside rulers. They had a Turkic Mongol origin and they brought along their customs and culture from Central Asia. Now, what is the most visible symbol of culture and identity? What one wears, right? And the Mughals affected it the most. This simply changed how Indians dressed up. Many of the present day dresses and attires were a result of the Mughal rule. In fact, four parts of attire in India are a consequence of the Mughal rule. The Ghungat, a form of wheel by women, is gradually disappearing. Apart from remote villages and some semi-urban areas, you won't find any women wearing a Ghungat. But how did it become a part of the Indian dress anyway? In fact, wheeling and seclusion was not a part of the Indian culture in the Vedic era or even the post-Vedic era. So, how did it penetrate the Indian attire? The answer lies in the Mughal era. During the Mughal rule and even during the era of Sultanates, it was common for senior officials or the emperors to lay eyes upon a woman and take her into harem. During the Mughal era, this practice got normalized. The imperial Mughal harem itself had many Rajput women, from Jodhawai to Indra Kavar. No commoner could resist if an emperor or even an official decided to include a woman in his harem. During the wedding season, such actions got accelerated. Bridal party raids were common at that time and something had to be done to overcome this. So to protect their daughters from Mughal emperors and their officials, people made two important changes. Number one, organizing marriages in V hours instead of early mornings and number two, using Parda or Ghungar to seclude and wheel women from the Mughal rulers. In places where the Mughal rule was strong like North and Northwest India, Ghungar became too popular and a part of even the Hindu attire and ethos. Today, we do not see a wedding without the sehra, white flower strings attached to the pagri or the turban of the bridegroom to cover his face. But the traditional Hindu wedding in India involved only a pagri on the bridegroom's head and there would be no sehra suspended on the pagri. In some parts of India, however, sehra has become a part of all weddings since the Mughal era. Even a practice called sehra bandi is organized, especially in Punjab, that basically involves tying the sehra. In fact, the entire attire of a Hindu bridegroom has changed. Earlier, the bridegroom used to wear a dhoti and an angavastra or the shoulder cloth. This was in accordance with the Indian climate and also the Hindu belief in favor of unsued or unstitched clothes during religious activity. Now, of course, Shedwani, a dress that originated in the 16th and 17th centuries in Central Asia, has become the standard dress of most North Indian bridegrooms. Now, this must have surprised you. You may have believed that Salwar Kameez originated in ancient India, but it actually does not have an Indian origin. In their paper, Elucidation of Indian Salwar Kameez, researchers Monisha Kumar and Amit Walia wrote, the word Salwar has been used to describe loose-fitted trousers fastened by drawstrings at the waist in Turkey, Persia and the Arab world. The word Kameez is originally Arabic and is used to describe a shirt of usually varied lengths. In the pre-Mughal era, it wasn't a part of the traditional Indian attire, but very subtly and cleverly Mughals made it appear as if it was an Indian dress and therefore it remains a part of Indian clothing even today. In India, wearing a burqa has been on the rise for quite some time now. But in the pre-Mughal era, the burqa obviously had no significance in India. The burqa has an Arabic origin, but it has more to do with the geography than with the religion. It was in vogue there. Even during the pre-Islamic period, the burqa was meant to offer protection against animals, especially during the winter months and was also used as a covering chadar by village women. But India doesn't really have an Arabic geography. However, with time, the attire has become a religious symbol and this is why it is used in India. Indian attire was actually quite different before the Mughal era. 
but mughal rule changed the most visible representation of a culture that is its attire upside down